got a uh, Python script on Raspberry Pi. I'm going to read back all of the valid PID data from uh, my ECU, which is here, which is from a, a Mini uh, R53. And uh, I'm read it back through an Elm cable here, so you can see the flashing lights on the on top of the Elm cable as I uh, as I read the data. And um, I've got the Raspberry Pi there, and I've got a Python script on there, and this is just some uh, emulation hardware to, to run my ECU. So if I run the script, you'll see that the lights on the on the Elm device start flashing. It takes a, a little while for it to connect a, a, a protocol um, on the Elm device, uh, but then it's now communicating and getting the data back. If I scroll back up to the top of this data, I'll explain all the data. Um, so, first of all, it does a connection um, to the device. So this is just uh, pretty much the same as uh, in my last video, but there's a lot more data. So I've got more, brought back more information about the Elm device. Uh, I won't go over that because it's not really that relevant at this point. Um, and then it automatically, what the code does now is it finds the PIDs which are valid for the ECU. It finds all of the PIDs which are valid for the ECU, and then it, it forms each, it gets the information about each PID which is valid for the ECU, and just brings it all all of the information back. So this this one is mode seven, which is getting the diagnostic trouble codes. It gets back uh, in a data structure currently the the, the uh, PID the um the code, and then the description for the code, which it looks up from a, a, a data file. It gets all of them, uh, and then it does the same for mode three, which is um, the stored codes, um, and there's only one of those. Uh, and then it gets all the other inf information, like oxygen sensors present in bank one. There's three oxygen sensors present, engine RPM, and it does the calculations required to convert it into the actual values, which are, are properly human readable. Uh, time in advance before top dead center, and this, of course, the ECU isn't. On the running engine, so these are all the kind of the, the values when the ignition switched on, but nothing's nothing's actually actually running. And as you can see from these uh, engine fa failure codes up here, I haven't got a throttle um, pedal connected to it either, so I'm getting lots of throttle issues, and that's why throttle position here is 100%. Uh, any pids with an exclamation mark in front of them. Uh, in my in the app applications, I eventually will get it into a graphical inter uh, application. The exclamation mark PIDs won't get automatically displayed or uh, be selectable and, and this is just um, for finding out what other PIDs are available so that that one's been executed and, and it's just been they're all being displayed here. Uh, and ODB standards the vehicle confirms conforms to EODB Europe so that that makes it uh, that makes sense because it's a mini in Europe. <laughs> um, fuel trim bank one Calibration message number of bytes, uh, and then it, uh, there's a bunch of information on one of the PIDs which tells you things like um, whether the mill light's on and what tests are available. Um, uh, and then there's another uh, bike count thing, uh, oxygen sensor, because I haven't got any oxygen sensor, I, I should actually connect an oxygen sensor and see what it does, but I haven't got any oxygen sensors connected so it comes back with uh, zero values. Uh, then it tells you about fuel system one is currently in open loop uh, due to engine temperature and pr probably because the engine's not running uh, and there isn't a fuel system two present. Um, engine temperature on my rig I've set, I've turned it right up 142 degrees uh, and this wouldn't normally be displayed but that's to actually clear um, tr engine trouble codes but I'll keep coming back on this rig because because the, uh, the throttle pedal isn't present. Uh, brings back information like cali uh, calibration IDs, the VIN uh, calibration validation numbers, uh, manifold pressure, vehicle speed, uh, vehicle identification number, uh, engine load, oxygen sensor two, air intake temperature, distance traveled with Malfunction light on, fewer kilometers, uh, long term fuel bank trim and percentage. 
So that's all the pin switch my the ECU I've got connected supports and it's bringing back the data flows and it looks looks correct uh, for an ECU which isn't in a car with a with an engine. Uh, so that's a good start. So I'll go over the changes in my code which I've made since my last video. Um, so at, at this stage, so the first video was uh, really communicating with the Elm device without a script and then writing a basic script in Python to get the communications going and get start getting data back. And then this, this stage is really, I'm starting to structure the program a bit more. So I've got an init app um, routine, which just goes through, at the moment I'm not using Pygame, but ultimately I'll be using this Pygame class, which will um, allow me to display graphics. So I'll eventually get a graphical user interface on it. Uh, I've got some of these lines um, commented out at the minute, so this is when I want to actually start displaying graphics, but I'm not doing that at the minute. Uh, and I, I'll be disabling the ma uh, mouse pointer because I'll be using a touch screen ultimately. Um, and then I've got an, a function just to do the uh, end of uh, the application. So it makes sure that the Elm device is closed. Basically that's closing the serial port for the Elm device. Uh, and then it sets the mouse pointer to visible again. Um, and then it quits, quits the, uh, the application. Um, so this, first of all, um, in the main application, I'll set up the uh, classes which I want to use. And so I've moved all of the, all of the code which I did in the last video into a class called Elm327. So that's where I'm going to do all the, all the Elm related communications with the, with the um, ECU. And I'll describe that class in a second. Uh, there's not much in this main application at the minute uh, because it's just really a test harness still. Um, so it initializes the application. So that is a function that's saw just up, uh, just above, and it calls calls that. And at the minute, I'm just displaying what the resolution of the the display is if I, if I have a graphics on. So I'm just preparing to do graphics stuff. Um, and then it initializes. Uh, communication with the Elm device. So there's a few things it does when it's communicating with that. There's a f um, so first of all, it, it decides whether or not it can communicate with the Elm device at all. Uh, and then it tries to connect to the CAN bus and make sure it can connect to the CAN bus. If all that succeeds, um, I can get any messages which occurred during the initialization of the Elm device and print them if, if there were any. Um, and then I just print the inf information from the Elm device. So that's just telling me the version number of the Elm device, any messages and stuff like that. Uh, not really that relevant for communicating with a vehicle. Uh, then, then I start doing the communication with the vehicle. And the first thing I do is when, when the connection happened up, up here, when it connected to the, the Elm device uh, and it, it connects to the uh, actual CAN bus on the Elm device, uh, at that point, it gets all the valid PIDs for that ECU that it sees. And here I'm just asking for a list of the, the valid PIDs that it found when it connected. And I iterate through that list of PIDs. And for each of the PIDs, I actually call here. I, you can, I've got function, a member function, the Elm device, which um, I can call uh, with the PID number I want to run. And that will return data about that PID. And then I just display it on the screen, as you saw when I ran it. And then there's just this uh, end app is called so that's the the main routine which is like i say it's just a literally a test harness really at the minute so then i come to the elm class so this is the only other class really i've got um if i actually if i just go to the command prompt just quickly um you'll see that these are these are all the files i've added so i've added a bunch of files so this is the elm class this is the main application class most of these things are text files so all the lookup tables are done in text files and I just load those into the application and then I can refer to them from there. So most of it is really text lookup um, files. So in the um class, uh, I have most of this you'll have seen from previous, well, uh, not actually not most of it because most of it's probably new, but a lot of this is from the previous video. So the, just like the constants which I'm using, I'm now um, having uh, at the top of the, the um, in constants, I've got some standard strings which I'm using throughout this function, throughout this class. Uh, PID functions. So what I do is, um, because that, that function, that single function you saw in the in the main application where I can call it and it, it runs a PID, I actually keep a list of the PID function pointers 
and then when the PID number is, point, uh, is passed into this class, I can actually then execute whichever member function is actually required just from the PID number. Uh, I'll explain how that's done in a little while. Then I've got the cons class constructor, uh, and in the class constructor, I'm reading all, all my lookup um, data. So all the files I just read into like the lookup tables, um, and I do that for this vehicle ADB standards. Standard air status, fuel system status, trouble code prefixes, trouble codes for the ISO and the SAE standard, trouble codes for the Mini Cooper, um, PID descriptions. So I can convert PID, PID numbers into descriptions. So for the different modes. So that's all the all the data, uh, all the lookup tables read in from the text files. Uh, then I open up the serial port. Uh, this is this was in the previous video, so I just um, com configure the ELM device as I need to the ELM device to be. And then I've got a member function to close the serial port when I when I want to finish communications. I've got a function which tells me if the ELM device is present, so I just issue an ELM a simple ELM command. Uh, and if that succeeds or not, I can tell whether the ELM, ELM device is present or not. Um, and in the initialization, in the function, in the creation, um, in the constructor of this uh, class, uh, if any any errors or, or anything occurred, I store them in a string so I can get them out if, if and decide whether or not any issues occurred whilst the the uh, constructor constructed. Uh, I get info. So it's just getting info about the ELM device that was in basically in the last video. Connect. I, I've changed the connect function slightly. Um, in, the, in the previous one I had it retrying several times, but uh, it just tries once, so you can call connect several times if it doesn't connect the first time. Uh, it always seems to connect the first time. I haven't had any issues with that. Um, so it issues a, a basic uh, PID in order to open up, uh, to connect the ELM device to the CAN bus on the ECU. Uh, and then uh, some of the PIDs, like these mode three, four, and seven, these are to do with trouble codes. And I add those to the valid PID uh, list that I've got because these don't, uh, the actual um, EC itself doesn't define these as being valid. These are just uh, valid as standard. However, you can actually, for, so PID zero, so mode one, PID zero, actually tells you which PIDs are valid from PID zero one to PID 20. Uh, so the ECU will tell you which PIDs it supports. And then it will do the same um, for from 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80. So I just uh, interrogate the ECU and ask him, ask the ECU what PIDs it supports for each of these areas. And then for mode five, which I haven't done anything about because I, I don't really know what mode five is about. And then mode uh, nine, I get the PID support for that. Mode nine is information about um, the, the ECU, not, not really information about uh, actual vehicle status. So it's things like VIN number. Um, and then this is function you saw in, that, in the uh, test harness, which I, where I get a list of all the valid PIDs, which I can then um, iterate through. And then do PID, so in test harness. So when I want to execute a PID, I pass that PID number in. And when I execute a PID, it actually calls a function within uh, this class, depending on what the PID number is, it looks up the function that's appropriate to run for that particular um, PID and then it returns a result or, or it does a uh, exception handling as well. So if anything unexpected happens, it can uh, print on the console what unexpected happened uh, and just return an error string. Uh, and then these were in the previous video. So is just to send us a, a request over the serial link to the ELM device and get a response back. Um, resolve PID data. So when um, when I request for a list of valid PIDs, it comes back as a bunch of bytes in hex format, and this just decides, because they come back as a bitmap, and it sorts them out into what PIDs are valid, what PID numbers are valid from that bitmap. Uh, data to trouble codes, so trouble codes come back in pairs of 
hex numbers. Um, so this just sorts them out into pairs and sorts them into individual trouble code numbers. And trouble code data just takes the trouble code numbers and adds a description, you know, finds a description for the trouble codes and returns it in a data structure. Pruning data. So when I get communication back from the Elm device, uh, normally it echoes the mode you requested and the PID you requested, and this, this can be used to get rid of that data coming back to you because you're not interested in that data. And then this is the main uh, set, and this from this part of the class to the end, this is where I define the PID handling function. So each PID function I call PID and then the mode number and the PID number. And then I add, after I've defined that, I add the... Um, add it to my PID functions array. So the label I, I, I would look up is the mode number and um, PID number. And then I have the pointer to the function because that's the, that's the name of the function. I just build up a list of all the references of mode number and PID number with the relevant function which needs to be called for them. So when I actually come to, to passing the PID number, all we'll I have to do is look up in this, in this list which I'm looking for, it will return which function I need to call and I just call that function. So that's quite a neat way of doing it because all I need to do is just call into a single function. I don't have to actually call these, I could call these member functions specifically, uh, but I don't have to do that. I can just have a single point of entry to this class and pass it the PID number, the mode number I want to run, and it will do that and it will pass me back, it will translate the data. So all these functions do is get the response back. And then with the response, they, they sort it out into the, the formats that's needed. So it might be a string, or it might be a floating point number, or it might be an integer, or, or binary data. It could be sort of anything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. And that's one of the strengths of Python, um, is that you can, you can change data type whenever you want. It's also a weakness. I'd actually prefer C and C++, but, but never mind about that. Um, so if I just go through here, every function is based around the same kind of thing. In some, like in this function, this doesn't happen very often, but like it, I look up um, actual bit codes and decide what to do with the bit codes. Uh, but hit, um, let's see, a typical one. So in this one, I get back the response and then I do a calculation on it. So 100 times the response divided by 255, and that returns the engine load as a percentage. And just returns it. So most of the most of these functions are simple like this, uh, where by default it has no data. It returns a, a string declare and there's no data. It checks to see if the PID is a valid PID for the um, ECU by looking at it in the in the list of valid PIDs. It then requests the PID uh, from the Elm device, gets a response uh, and takes off the first two bytes because they're just an echo of the mode and PID. And then with that result after, after that, I can actually calculate what's required here and then just return that. And if you scroll through these, I won't go through through them all, but I've put a comment on each one as to what actually physical data is that it returns. And it, they basically do the same thing and they just get added to the list of functions in the PID lookup and that's that's what I'm doing. And so he, if I've put comments like this, they, those are ones that I haven't done yet. So mainly I've done the ones for the ECU, which I'm currently using. Um, in order to do these other ones, I really need to set up a load of test data so I can test them and make sure that it's working and hopefully not, not releasing valid code. So I've got a list of, so I've put comments on the ones where I need to add, add the functions. Uh, but in the different modes, I've separated, separated the different modes out with comments. Uh, and it's just a big list of list of those. And, and that's the code. And so if I keep that in the Elm class, then I don't have to worry about that. So when I get to do graphical user interface, uh, all of this is out of, out of mind. And all I do is call uh, the PID that I want and display it how I want. And I can get the user to select things. But that's the update for this, this one, and hopefully the next update should be the start of doing a graphical interface.